Hey everybody, Winstreak here. Today I got a question from Tiny Crocodile. They are looking to find a way to pick the correct instance of a object that they're making. So, without further ado, we'll hop into a brand new project and run it from scratch. And I'm going to throw mouse on here real quick. And then I'm going to make two sprites. And sprite one. Set this to something a little smaller. Just be a green box. And I'm going to set the other sprite based off of sprite 1 by cloning it. And that'll be sprite 2. And I'm going to rename these to green box. And let's set this one to red box. And then I'm going to also copy this and paste it. And as you see, this one keeps the name green box. And this one's still red box. And I will go ahead and change this to red. And as you see, that color is now red. And just to show you, I'm going to change this one to bluish real quick. And that's going to affect this one as well. And that's because I copy pasted it. Whereas this one, I cloned the instance or the object. So a cloned object is its own, it gets its own object type right here that can have its own edits. If you copy paste it, you just get an additional object here with all of the same attributes. So I'm going to throw these back to green so they actually match the name. And we will work with these uh, two sets of boxes. And I'm just going to click on them and show you how you can talk to each each one. Um, it's going to be obviously a lot easier to talk to the uh, object type clone versus the copy pasted, but you can do both. And without further ado, we'll hop into our code and mouse on click on an object click and we can do green box and we'll just set the text to something to let us know we clicked on the green box. So your last click was on a green box. And we'll do the same thing for red box. So I just copy pasted that down, get all the code over, on left click on the red box, and we'll obviously want to set this one to red box. And we can do that in a unique way. In this way if we wanted to change the name this text code would stay correct. Whereas the other one, if we change the name of green box to yellow box, and then we click on it, it'll always say your last click was on green box, even though it's now called yellow box. So we can hop in here and we can go to red box dot and it's going to be object type name. And that'll just throw in the object type name. And we can run this real quick and I'll show you we click on this top green one, last click was on green box, click on this guy, your last click was on red box, and this one's going to follow the name verbatim. Uh, that's why it's capitalized and together, so we would edit that by going in here, and we can, oops. So this is going to have limitations, um, they have to be connected, uh, we can pretty much only just edit the overall name in the upper lower case. And then hop into here, and you can also see if I click the bottom one, your last click was on green box. So these both do the same thing. And now we'll differentiate between the two. So we will, I'm going to move this one down because this is the one we'll be working with. We'll add some sub events here. Add blank sub event. I'm going to have two sub events. And real quick, I'm just going to hop into here, and we'll use unique ID first. So these guys are 3 and 5, and I know these because I put them in myself. Uh, it gets a little more complicated if you're adding them with events throughout the game. Uh, you'll have to find a way to status track um, outside of the UID or save the UIDs as you make them for ones you know you're going to uh, use again. But right here, we know we have 3 and 5, so 
Easiest way is green box UID. We're picking by a unique ID. You can pick by three. And this one will pick by five. And then let's say append text here. And append just adds text on. So then we'll get to see this old text as well as whatever new text I put. I'm just going to say you picked the higher box. And I'm going to throw a new line on here because I'm going to append some stuff further on in the video as well. Um, so that'll just make it go to the next line before I end this text. And for the second one, we're going to say you pick the lower box. So now we can click. Your last click was on the green box. You picked the higher box. Your last click was on the green box. You picked the lower box. So it can tell from the UID what one I'm actually clicking on now. And now we'll hop back into layout. And I'm going to do one more copy paste. I don't want to be in the text. And we're going to have this green box here. And as you can see, it's the same as the other ones. It has its own unique ID, but we're not going to use it this time. We're going to use our own variable. So hop in here. Um, I'm just going to name it my UID. It will be my type of unique identifier. And I throw this on, and you can see they all have my UID set to them. The red one does not. And I'm going to go in and change this to 1. So this guy now has my UID of 1. These ones do not. So I'll also set this one. So we have 2 with 1, 1 with 0. And if I hop down here, I'm going to add one more blank sub-event. And we can do green box. And we can pick it by value. So we'll compare the instance value. If they have a my UID, which is the one we just made, set to 1. We can append one more time. And we'll say this box has a value of 1. And then this was sloppy. I'm just going to add a new line up here as well. And make sure there's enough room for it. Boop. And run it one more time. And now we can see this one gets all three lines of code. It's the green box. It was the higher of these two boxes. And it has that value of 1. This guy does not have that value of 1 but he is the lower box. And this guy does not have the lower or higher box setting, but he is a value of one. And they all three were green boxes. And this one just has his lonely little red box. Um, and those are pretty much all the ways you would go about uh, picking an instance. You can also do things based on like their location on the map, uh, X, X, Y, just compare what one's higher or lower. It really depends what you want to do. But since you're working specifically with buttons, I imagine you put those down beforehand. You should be able to just use the UID for them. Uh, but if you have any further questions, just throw them in the comments, and we'll help you out. Have a good one.